Hello and welcome to this GarrettCon training presentation on advanced IGMP uh, configuration and verification. Okay, so let's pop back into the uh, switch, if we log back in. Um, I had to separate these two videos. The previous video was getting fairly long winded and I didn't want to go uh, on too long, so I separated out the advanced stuff here. So for those who um, want to dig deeper, can, those who just need to know the basics, uh, don't need to worry. Uh, let me just check my physicals, bear with me. Okay, so I sorted myself out and I'm back at the command prompt, so let's log in. And let's jump straight to the IGMP mode. And let's have a look around. So if we do the question mark, and have a look at what um, commands we have. So we have the standard IGMP, we'll skip group, and IGMP, we can use this to enable or disable IGMP. We saw that in the last video. We have the MCAS command, which is disable or enable uh, unknown unicast streams. Bear with, like anybody, any multicast stream or traffic on the network, which people haven't asked to receive, is considered to be unknown. And any of those unknown streams, it will basically block until people are asked to receive it. So it's the efficiency mechanism we were describing when we talked about how IGMP manages that traffic. So we want to basically uh, uh, make sure we have that on. Because otherwise we're kind of defeating the point of having IGMP running. Because as we know, uh, unmanaged multicast traffic is handled like broadcast traffic. And effectively, too much of it creates a, a situation very similar to a broadcast storm. So we always want to enable that whenever we can. The mode is where we specify the layer, uh, layer 2 or normal. And we covered that in the last video. And... Uh, that brings us on to the more advanced uh, commands. So we have a whole bunch of uh, set commands here, uh, show commands. Let's start with the first one which we skipped initially which is the group command. This command is used to manually add a, a, um, uh, an EIGRP group. So instead of relying on uh, a, a computer or some other uh, IP device connected to the network sending out join messages and asking for that stream uh, what you're going to do is you're going to manually configure the switch to send it out a particular port for a particular VLAN uh, with a particular group uh, IP address to whatever device is connected there. It's kind of like a static entry, a manual entry where you don't rely on any communication between the devices to make that happen and the syntax for that is here and then that's what that command is used for. Now we have the uh, set leave and let's talk about this command. So um, there's three versions of IGMP, IGMP version 1, 2 and 3. So IGMP was the original, um, IGMP version 1 was the original, IGMP version 2 makes some improvements to that. Off the top of my head I can't quite remember what those are. Um, but the important one is IGMP version 3. Uh, one of the key improvements that does is that it sends out a leave message. So when a um, an IP device, say a, a computer which is watching a multicast stream, decides that it's no longer going to watch it, so you, you, you basically close down the application which is asking for it. Um, with IGMP versions 1 and 2, you have to wait for a timer to expire before uh, the switches would realize that you no longer wanted to receive that stream. With version 3 we added a message called the leave message whereby the when you close down the application the uh, computer will send a message to the switch saying I, I don't want to receive this stream anymore uh, please stop sending it to me and that was an efficiency saving there. So if you want to enable that feature you can do and that's how you would do it, enable it or disable it. So um, for that's that one. Uh, the next command is the set port. Let's talk about, briefly about this. And okay, so we got a bunch of options here. So the uh, set port command, you need to specify a port. So a set port, and then the port number, say for example, ports one. Uh, and we're going to change that mode. Now the two modes, the three modes here are automatically allow the switch to decide whether or not to send multicast traffic on that port or whether or not not to send it. It automatically determines that based on what join requests, what devices come on the network and ask to receive what stream. So best off 
nine times out of ten leave those as set to auto and let the switch decide for you if you want to manually disable I, uh, multicast traffic on a particular port you can do that there and if you want to manually enable this you can do that set to forward as well so those are your three options auto let the switch decide block always block multicast traffic if you do that you connect the device you try and receive multicast traffic on that device and it's not going to happen okay so you've you turned it off you turned off multicast on that port or ports whichever you specify here and the final option is you always 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 forward multicast traffic which effectively disables the IGMP management process all that efficiency and what we're actually going to do is we're going to manipulate this we're going to use this command here so that when uh, we're going to do a demonstration out of talk to you through these commands um, if you remember from the previous video when we had a span entry protocol event where we took down the active link and span entry recovered with the backup link that caused a bit of a delay in the IGMP uh, process and the video stream was interrupted for a few seconds now some customers require the stream to be uh, much more reactive so there's a break and the interruption is, is, is hardly noticeable now if you want to do that what you can do is you can specify the trunk ports to always forward the multicast traffic and that way every switch receives the multicast traffic regardless of they need it or not uh, by which you reduce the efficiency of the IGMP process you have additional traffic on your network but the failover recovery period for um, the images if there is a break is much less so we'll, we'll talk about that later um, so let's delete that command let's have another look we've also got uh, set query uh, da, 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 da. let me see if I can spell it correctly when it says query it's basically asking um, that terminology comes from a device on the network say a PC wants to receive a multicast stream so it sends out the message to a join message to the switches saying I would like to join the stream I would like to join this group and therefore get the stream sent to me now the query comes from every so often the switch will ask the PC who's receiving the stream do you still want to see this this traffic and the, this, the PC then has to reply saying yes I do and there's a timer there which we can adjust as well now it's query because it's asking the questions of the devices receiving the traffic do you still want to receive it yes or no and if you can enable or disable this process which is basically enabling or disabling the IGMP management on this switch if you want to do that and that's what that command does so you can enable or disable that functionality within the switch here with that command the uh, next command is set QI which is one of the timers I mentioned so if we uh, expand that here it's basically how often the switch will ask the uh, device who's receiving the multicast traffic do you still want to receive this traffic it'll wait for the answer gets the answer then it'll wait for the interview interval to expire and then it'll ask the same question again and um, to be honest I can't see I've actually had a play around and uh, manipulated some of these values and it doesn't really make too much of a difference to be honest you're much better off leaving out the defaults it works quite well at the defaults the only one I would recommend you change is the one I'm going to show you later but that's what this command does should you need to change it so the other options are uh, set QRI set uh, QRI and what is this one is how long the device who's been asked the question do you still want to receive this traffic has to reply so if it takes too long to reply basically the switch stops sending in the traffic assuming that he doesn't want to receive it uh, anymore but as I said chances are you're not going to need to uh, mess around with those timers there so uh, the other ones are show commands so they don't really show much until you actually have some multicast traffic on there uh, these are the ones used by my Windows machine so um, you might not know it but the multicast traffic man it's out there it's on the network you can't really see it you don't know necessarily what it's doing but it's out there it's doing stuff behind the scenes and and Windows is sending out multicast traffic here um, 
but what we'll do is we'll set up the multicast traffic and we'll see the group here we can see what ports are sending it where and we can see IGMP manage that multicast traffic IGMP in action if you like so we'll set up the same demo we did before and we can see those show commands um, work their magic okay so we've uh, set up the uh, streaming again using the network the same as we did in the previous video and um, I wanted to show you here the uh, network, the way it's all connected together, we still have the same three switches in a ring with rapid span tree, VLANs enabled and I wanted to show you uh, some of the details so if I hop back into, um, before I do that, if I just go to uh, this video is about five minutes long but that actually typed up quite quickly so again we're playing it on this computer then we're viewing it on the other computer as we can see here uh, so if we go to the uh, command line now and we take in the same, same command, show group here we are, we can see the group here, 224.10.10.10 whereas before it wasn't in the list and we can see all the details about what VLAN ID that's in, it's in, only in VLAN 10 so basically IGMP and, and VLANs and Spanning Tree, Rapid Spanning Tree, they all work together quite harmoniously um, so if you have a, a device in VLAN 10 and it's transmitting out multicast traffic only other devices in VLAN 10 will get to see that, so it's uh, it works per VLAN, and uh, it works with rapid span entry, so it's uh, all working symbiotically, so great uh, harmoniously to use a, another word. So um, that's the show groups, and we can see what uh, multicast uh, group addresses and multicast traffic and where that's going to is on the network. And so let's look at some of the other show commands. So we have show port, which shows you what port is doing what, and this is the modes. Remember we discussed about uh, modes being auto and blocking or forwarding. We'll just we'll change those now in a few minutes, and we'll have a look at that command. But you can see what port is set to which mode here using the show port command. And the final command is show router. It says show router. What it actually means is show Garrettcom enabled layer mode layer 2 IGMP switch but um, typically the functionality of the query is normally handled by a router uh, in standard IGMP uh, that's why they use the term router but show router is basically the switches um, the IGMP layer 2 switches uh, so here we have uh, connections to uh, switch 1 and uh, switch 2 and how we get to those particular ports and what VLANs we have there. So these are the other IGMP layer 2 switches we have on the network and what ports we connect to them and uh, what VLANs we're sending that traffic out on. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the values of um, in actual fact I'm going to show you the before and after. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the webcam and just remind you what happens when we break the link. Now uh, rapid span tree is incredibly quick and recovers from a network a link going down extremely quickly but IGMP takes a, a little bit longer to recover and what that means is that you get a, uh, a delay in uh, the break in the transmission uh, for a few seconds so well, let's see that now so it's paused while the active link went down and I know which one's the active link because I've, I've had a look at the spanning tree topology uh, previously so I know I've taken down the active path and we was waiting for this link there we are so the switches have relearned that they can send the traffic uh, over this link and there's an IGMP uh, device there's, there's a device wanting to receive that multicast traffic of an IGMP uh, sends it to that device so you saw the brief uh, outage there depending on the size of your network that can be um, a bit longer some people don't like that so we're going to use the commands to manipulate the uh, the switches into recovering a bit quicker but as I said this is an advanced feature uh, typically nine times out of ten you won't need to use this but it's only in a special occasion so what we'll do is we'll close down both the uh, source uh, transmission so if we close that there this will be good so you can see we've we stopped it on this computer and, and the receiving computer was stopped and we just uh, close this down as well and we'll give it a few seconds for those uh, tables to age out so that the switches have forgotten what device is con connected to which port just to ensure it's a fair test so that when we make the modifications 
the, the switches are learning for the first time so you won't think I'm cheating if we pop back into the uh, command line and we do the show groups again you can still see that it's it still knows about that group here and it's still got some time to go before it forgets it you can adjust these times if you want but really I haven't seen it make much of a difference okay I'll pause the video for a few seconds and just let those uh, those, those timers age out a little bit you can still see it, it takes a while for, for the switch to forget about who's uh, receiving the uh, stream so it's still sending out the traffic to that PC even though the PC doesn't want to receive it so um, what we're going to do while we wait is uh, go to that uh, command again I think it's the uh, set port and uh, we're going to change the trunk ports if I just show you on the switches so we have the switches connected together in a ring although it's not immediately obvious uh, but port 7 and ports 1 1 and 7 are used to connect one switch to the other these are the uh, inter switch ports these are the uh, tagged ports and we're gonna, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to change these from auto to forward so that they'll always send the multicast traffic out these switches and uh, my understanding is that if you've got a discarding port all it means is that the traffic comes to that discarding port and it just throws it in the bin bucket just ignores it so uh, it's uh, a slight maybe efficiency here but I don't think it's uh, uh, nothing to worry about so but as I said um, um, really these uh, are advanced commands and there's no real need to be manipulating them unless you uh, um, unless you really have a specific need to uh, make those streams recover quicker and uh, the command I'm going to show you is pretty much the only command I'd recommend altering the rest don't really have much of an effect and um, as far as I can see possibly on the larger network they might uh, be more beneficial but uh, this one's good and um, I'll show you how to use this one and uh, it does have a positive effect the others I tend to leave alone so uh, set ports uh, set port question mark uh, port equals 1 and 7 number 2 trunk ports and mode equals forward done and I'm just going to go back and I'm going to save that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and move my console cable from this first third switch to the others and enter the same commands on this one and this one as well so on the second and the third switch uh, just pop that in there in actual fact you don't need to see this I'm wasting time so uh, I'll be back in a second okay so I'm back I've uh, gone to the console on each of the ports uh, again you could turn it into it if you wanted to do the same thing but uh, just uh, for an easy life I'm using the console cable um, the command is set port which ports you want to set and what mode you want to set them to nice and easy in this case it's ports 1 and 7 for me and what we have a look at is the uh, show a group command and see if it's forgotten all about as we have as we can see it's forgotten all about the 224.10.10.10 group ID and let's fire that up again and we'll rerun the same test and we'll see how long it takes to fail over this time and how much of an interruption in the video stream we get okay so I'm back I've set up the VLC to send it from my computer where I'm recording these videos from through the network to the uh, PC's laptop sitting on top of the switches and we can see the two nerds uh, doing battle with the lightsabers okay so um, what I'm going to do now is do the same thing and see how much of an interruption we get in the video stream so we can see it, we can see it, we had a few seconds of outage now we didn't get any seconds of outage we've killed the active connection and nothing's happened the video carries on as normal so some applications are more critical than others uh, if you're watching a car park with an IP camera you might not be so fussed if it's a safety critical system and the cameras are looking down uh, a tunnel for traffic it might be important not to have a 30 second outage uh, bear in mind you'd only get those outages when you get fiber breaks or cable breaks so they tend not to happen that often anyway it's just a useful feature which is there it's worth having a look at if you have that requirement if you don't by and large I would seriously recommend just leave them at the defaults it works pretty good uh, it's keep it simple it's a golden rule with any engineering 
keep it simple, things tend to be more reliable, uh, less headaches, less problems, less troubleshooting, less configuration. But if you need to go and uh, uh, get into the tough stuff, this is, uh, have a look at the video, this talks you through it, and this is the benefit you can see, there's no outage in the video transmission. So uh, that concludes this video, uh, I hope this has been interesting, I hope it's been helpful for you, and on behalf of Garrettcom, I would like to uh, thank you for your time. Okay, goodbye.